I start with a pathogen. Our pathogen is verticillium, and verticillium wild cause severe diseases all over the world on a very, very broad host range. So here can you see the disease symptoms in oilseed rape. It's a wild thing and on the other side then uh, later in the season it forms microsclerotia. And these microsclerotia are the survival structures. So they can survive in soil for more than 20 years. And this is really a problem. There is currently no chemical fungicide and no other methods available to suppress this disease. We want to solve that by developing a bacterial seed treatment. So, who we are? Uh, this is Graz University of Technology had the lead in this project. And it's uh, Daria Rüberkova and Maria Schmuck working on the project. And we have also cooperations with uh, University of Wageningen and with Enema Company and Agro Plantarum. Before we started the project, we already selected some promising candidates which are able to suppress the growth of verticillium. You can see it here on this petri dish. The black one is a pathogen and the white one, these are antagonists and they are able to uh, suppress the growth. So the objectives of our project was first to characterize the biocontrol strains second, to evaluate them under commercial field conditions, and uh, the third, to develop really a product of them. In this place, I would like to introduce the microbiome to you, because this is very crucial for plant health, and therefore we included it in the study. So each organ of a plant, the root, the leaves, for example, but also the seeds, uh, are colonized by specific bacteria. They form a community, interact with each other. And here, for example, you can see a network which they form of interactions. And I will later come back to this point. For the first objective, I would like to present this highlight from our research, because we found out that the biocontrol agent is able to act via volatiles against the pathogen. It's, it's very interesting. If they sit together, so then they start a dialogue and at the end the pathogen gives up and cannot grow anymore. Another highlight from objective two are the field trials. So we have done a lot of field trials to evaluate the biocontrol agents Fortunately, we found sometimes very good effects also in the field, but in other cases we fail. Interestingly, this corresponds completely with a cultivar. So there were some cultivars and they were always affected by verticillium and cannot be controlled. And in other ones it works much, much better. To identify the background of this observation, we started to investigate the seed microbiome because we thought that the interaction of our biocontrol agent with the seed, this is a crucial point. This we have done, and here you can see the network, and we found out that really this network is very, very specific for each cultivars. And there are several networks which are very strong and it's impossible for a biocontrol agent to invade in this network. And there are other ones which are loose and here it is possible to invade and to establish on the plant. By the way, this is a first visualization of bacteria inside of the seeds. So this is a novel scientific finding until now we thought that the seeds are more or less sterile. Now I come to the conclusion from our research. There are two main conclusions. The first is, if we look on a plant or on a crop, so we, we have to think that this is a meta-organism. So it is not only the plant themselves, 
there are millions of microorganisms living inside and outside of the plants. And together, they form a holobiont and they interact with each other and a lot of function they fulfill together. And this is very, very important for all agricultural purposes. The other thing we learned is that microbial diversity can avoid pathogenicity and diseases. And verticillium is a microbiome disease. And we have to do everything to enhance microbial diversity. And then we can avoid the disease. By the way, this is not important only for plants, it's also important for humans because our health also depends on our microbial diversity. And each human has two kilo of microorganisms, so it is really crucial for our health. The last point are the future perspectives. We found also an interesting candidate which is able to enhance diversity we could apply them to the seed. And then if the seed start with germination, uh, it colonize, can colonize the root. And this is shown here in this picture. So all the green dots represent bacterial cells. And at the end, the roots are well uh, colonized. So, and my overall statement is really microbial diversity can be used for health issues and we have to connect plant health and human health.